the regularly scheduled meeting of Los Angeles City Council's Planning and Land Use Management Committee. Uh, we'll begin our proceedings by asking the clerk to call the roll this afternoon. Mr. Chair, Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson. Present. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield. Present. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas. Here. Councilmember John Lee. Present. Four members are present, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. For today's meeting, we will first start by public comment on multiple agenda items. We'll then move through the agenda one item at a time and take public comment, staff presentations, and vote on the items at the same time. General public comment will begin. Uh, we'll be at the end of the meeting. Our goal uh, today is to get to as many speakers as we possibly can. Uh, and there are further instructions on public comment that will be read into the record now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-644-6631 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. During public comment, city staff will call on members of the public by the last four digits of their phone number. By pressing star nine, callers will raise their hand, their virtual hand. Once a caller hears the last four digits of their phone number, they will need to press star six to unmute themselves and should be ready to speak. Once a caller is ready to speak, they must state their name and the item they are calling to speak on. Failure to do so will result in the call being muted and subsequently disconnected. Appellants and or their representatives and applicants and or their representatives will be allowed to speak for a total of three minutes per side unless otherwise noted by the chair. Members of the public wishing to speak on one agenda item only shall have an opportunity to speak for one minute. Members of the public wishing to speak on more than one item shall state that and shall be allowed to speak for a total of two minutes. Failure to raise your hand to speak in a timely manner before the comment period for the items ends results in forfeiture of the opportunity to participate in public comment for the item. City Attorney, please provide additional guidance on public comment. Terry Kaufman, Messia City Attorney's Office. When speaking on agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to, as uh, previously stated, get through all the speakers. If you're not speaking on topic or if we cannot tell whether you are speaking on an agenda item, I will provide a warning if you do not immediately and clearly return to the topic or if you continue to stray off topic and disrupt the meeting, you will forfeit the rest of your time and we'll move on to the next speaker. Thank you. We're going to go to public comments at this time. Thank you. In three zero two five, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Uh, yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. This is John. <clears throat> I'm uh, following up on a letter that I sent for requesting an, an appeal uh, based on some of the findings that I conducted after listening to the whole route uh, back on uh, early Caller, can you please identify the item May, you're speaking May on? I'm sorry? Can you identify the, num the which items you're speaking on? Oh, this would be for item two for the um, So right now we're route taking appeal. multiple item comment. So when we get to item two, you can give comment then. I'm sorry, okay. Thank you. Caller with the number ending in 1101, can you please press star six to unmute yourself and then state your name and the items you're speaking on. Caller with the number ending in 1101. Yes, um, I'm calling on item 13.
Caller, could you repeat your, your statement one more time? I'm calling on item 13. Okay, so right now we're taking multiple item comment. When we get to item 13, we'll call on your number once more. Thank you. Terry Kaufman, Messiah City Attorney's Office. Can you please, we're, we are on multiple public comment right now, so if you want to speak on more than one item, this is the time to do it. If you want to speak on just one item, you have to wait until that item's called, and you press star nine if you wish to speak now. Caller with the number ending in 4024. Can you please press star six to unmute yourself and then state your name and the items you're speaking on? Can you hear me, Mommy Attorney? I want to speak on all items in general public comment. What is my time, please? Hello? Your time is running, caller. You have, you have two minutes and they're expiring at this moment. Oh, oh, okay, well, let me start by talking about the housing inequalities under Plum. Ever since Jose Weezar and his corruption and RICO in the city of Los Angeles, you have defamed the city Angelinos by your conduct. You evil fucking motherfuckers, black motherfuckers, shambos. I'm talking to you, Dawson. Yeah, All right, we're, we're up. This, this call's car. over. Ooh. This call's over. Let's go to the next caller. Caller with the number ending in 5065. Can you please press star 6 to unmute yourself and then state your name and the items you're speaking on? Hi, my name is Donald Harlan. I'm speaking on uh, items 1, 2, 3, 9, and 11. Um, uh, I'm a little concerned about some of the uh, uh, beachfront properties. People asking permission to build things and do things on the beachfront properties. Uh, a lot of those beachfront properties have been owned by people for a while. Uh, it seems unusual that some new company would just pop up and show up and try and build things on the property. They're not. If they're not, I'm not saying I, I don't know who owns that property, but or are they claiming it? Uh, 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 but uh, yeah, I don't really know. But. It seems odd that they would, uh, somebody would just pop up brand new and just say start building stuff because uh, those properties and Venice Beach, Beach boardwalks are subject to that constantly. Somebody's always trying to get an idea, oh, I want something here, you know. Uh, and people come from all over the United States and the world to try that out there. I, I don't know, maybe take a good look at that. Um, and uh, uh, also that, that Maybe that if they're asking for something and they, they don't really deserve that or that's not theirs and they're asking you to continue something uh, and go ahead and drop them if, you know, tell them to stop asking to continue things uh, or if they're asking for permission that don't belong to them. Um, also, uh, there's, uh, uh, I'm concerned about number 11 uh, that, uh, I don't know if you were aware in Delaware that, uh, there's some prominent politicians coming out of there. Uh, some of the, a lot of the lim limited liabilities had to be uh, shut down from Delaware. There was too many doing too much at one time, people doing illegal things. Uh, suddenly their guy got in the office and they're all, all running at stuff. Well, I don't know, maybe the people in the city might want to be aware, take a look at the uh, companies related to that state. Uh, they're being overrun over there. They have too many guys going at it right now. And who knows if what's going on is legal or not, or who, who has what, uh, but uh, it's seven, seven, and Thank that's a consideration that's for number 11. Caller with the number ending in 1213, can you please press star 6 to unmute yourself? And then state your name and the items you're speaking on.
Caller, I can see that you've unmuted yourself. You can begin your public comment now. Yes, hello. My comment is in reference to my comments is in reference to the um, development at 806 West Adams. Is that on the agenda at this point? Caller, we're taking multiple items right now. We can call right. your number when we get to that item. Okay. So should I continue to speak or are you? No. Caller with the number ending in 1403, can you please press star six to unmute yourself and then state your name and the items you're speaking on. Well, because all of the items in the general public comment as well. Okay. How much, how much bloody time do I get? Caller, which items are you speaking on? I, I, I don't know if you have shit in your ear. I ask for all of the items in the general public comment. You have two minutes. Your time is ticking. But uh, why would I only have two minutes if I have general public comment and multiple items? I'm reading your agenda. Or are you trying to fuck people at the time? Very, very rude. Now, you, to you, continuing your items. Now, I understand you have not given the council members enough money yet. Go back and donate to the officeholder account. Pay off the building inspectors a little bit faster. And most of all, donate to the officeholder account. But you have not been doing it, and that's why you're extending these extensions. And we, us, the developer community, are very, very discriminated in her. So we want to have a PayPal account for each of the 15 council members so we can start paying you off in crypto. That way, you will benefit, we will benefit, because we want to build our project. And you people keep talking to that guy, that guy that tells you the N-word, and the other one that tells you the symbol. We are trying to build shit. We need to build more shit. We believe in Mr. Sadia. We need to keep building and building and building and building more fucking shit and keep putting more cash in the hands of the planning department, the planning department, the inspectors, the building and safety, your non profits that we pay off, and we have to have money to pay off the judges to fight the sequel, colossal. And right now, we don't have enough cash. We only have $400 million left in our payoff account. We need to raise more money. So we want Thank to you, start Caller. paying you time. off in crypto. Where did Caller with the number ending in 1969, can you please press star six to unmute yourself and then state your name and the items you're speaking on? Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Hi, uh, Mikhail Johnson. I am calling in support of item number 13. I hope you guys um, approve the project. Caller, we're taking, is, uh, caller, we're only doing multiple item comment. When we get to item 13, we can call in your number and you can give your testimony then. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the number ending in 4024. <laughs> caller with the number ending in 5065. Can you please press star six to unmute and then state your name and the item you're speaking on? Hi, it's Donald Harlan. I'm calling about the, uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, oceanfront walk properties. Uh, uh, I know that those uh, properties are subject to a lot Caller, of- Caller, uh, we're only doing multiple to, item comment. And uh, it, would be, okay. it would be nice if you guys are real Caller. careful about those. Um,
That exhausts our speakers list. Thank you so much to those of you who've uh, called in. I will note uh, we've had a little bit of a break, so uh, getting uh, back accustomed to the uh, technology I will take us a second. So forgive us and uh, we'll forgive you and assume we're all doing the best that we can. I will note that uh, we've been joined by the venerable Senator Gil Sedil to make up the fifth member of this uh, committee. Um, you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Oh, there he is. Um, we have a number of items, uh, Mr. Clerk, that uh, there are requests to continue to various dates. Those items are items one through six and item number 16. Um, if you could give us the dates of those items, I'll uh, ask, I will move that we continue those items to the date specified and uh, ask my colleagues for a second. So Thank again. you, Mr. Chair. Item number one is a request to continue to September 21st, 2021. Item number two is a request to continue to September 21st, 2021. Item number three, there's a request to continue to September 7th, 2021. Item number four is a request to continue to August 17th, 2021. Item number five is a request to continue to August 17th, 2021. Item number six uh, is a request for a date to be determined. And item number 16 is a request for a date to be determined. All right, uh, so it's been moved that we continue these items. It's been seconded by Mr. Cedillo. Please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. Councilmember Mark Gridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Aye. <clears throat> A unanimous vote, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number six, uh, which the chair is requesting that we adopt on uh, consent. If there are no uh, callers uh, in public comment for item number six, uh, I'll ask for a second, and we'll move that. It's been moved by Mr. Ridley Thomas. We have five second. callers on the queue. Pardon me? We have five callers on the five queue. Five callers. Let's, uh, let's hear from them. Caller, can Hello? You state, hi, caller. Can you state your name and the item you're speaking on? Yeah, my name is George Francisco. I'm speaking on item 9 and 13. Um, caller, I'm right, the president of the Venice caller, Chamber right of now Commerce. We're item like number to, six. I'd like to register my official support in the support. Um, this is Terry Kaufman, Macias, City Attorney. Um, the time to speak on multiple items is uh, over. Um, the, that time was called, and if you didn't call in at that point, uh, you can only call in on individual items, and right now the item that's up for consideration is item six only. Item six. There are no callers on the queue. Thank you so much. So it's been moved and seconded. Please call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Aye. Five ayes. It's a unanimous vote. Excellent. That takes us to item number eight. We could read that into the record and then we'll have a report from uh, staff. Item eight. Item number eight. I thought we just did on it. Item number eight is categorical exemption from CEQA and related findings. Report from the Planning Commission and an appeal from okay. the determination of the Planning Commission to approve. Uh, essentially a recycling material sorting facility in the industrial zones 
at Peoria and Tahunga Avenue in Council District 6. All right, do we have a uh, staff report on this item? Hi, this is planning um, for number item number eight. Yes, it, it was a, an appeal, um, a second level appeal of a plan approval um, to basically uh, waive improvements for this project um, along one of the streets, which is along Tahunga and part of the PR of the street. Um, the report to that response to appeal points are, have been submitted to the council file. Um, however, uh, I believe two weeks ago, the appellant had withdrawn their appeal. Um, but our report has still been um, submitted, and we recommend denial of the appeal. Thank you so much. Uh, in as much as this uh, appeal has been withdrawn, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm recommending that we take the formal action of denying the appeal. So I'll move that. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Ridley Thomas. Please call the roll. Councilmember Martinez Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Aye. Five votes. The vote is unanimous. Excellent. Thank you. So there, there are uh, specific instruction on this denial. Do, do we need to read those into the record? Miss. That, that um, just upholds the um, prior decision, so that's what you want to do. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so that takes us to item number seven. Yes. Item number seven is a categorical exemption from environmental um, uh, requirements and appeals filed by various uh, people. Uh, from a determination of the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners approving uh, a, an application to export uh, 1,600 yards of earth for a property located at 3690 North Goodland Avenue and subject to conditions of approval. All right, we have a report from uh, Department of City Planning. This is Dean Alkanawi's Building and Safety. Uh, this hall route was approved on April 27, 2021 by the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners and staff recommendations were adopted as board action for the export of 1,662 cubic yards. Uh, note that the neighboring property 3696 North Goodland was approved under board file number 20089 on April 2nd, 2021 for an export of 1,963 cubic yards, which is referenced in this appeal, but this is a separate haul route item. Uh, for the issues in the appeal, uh, the first issue states that this development will undermine the structural integrity of the hill. Uh, the slope stability of the hill has been addressed in the soils approval letter for this project, and the report has been reviewed and approved by the grading division. And grading issued a soils report approval letter on April 6, 2020. For the second issue, Goodland Avenue is a very narrow street. It will be difficult for hauling to traverse along parking cars. Uh, per specific condition C10 in the staff report, only one hauling truck is allowed on Goodland Avenue and Hillkirk Street. And condition C8 in the staff report indicates that no parking signs shall be posted along the streets if of the haul route if needed uh, during hauling. The third issue states um, that the approved haul routes for 3690 North Goodland and 3696 uh, North Goodland Avenue um, will be constructed simultaneously. Um, if so, will be allowed in the neighborhood and how many hauling days. So, the hauling days are specified for each of the approvals, uh, 12 for the one before you today and 14 for the other haul route. Um, the projects um, will take place consecutively according to the applicant on record during uh, our hearing. Issue number four, uh, not all neighbors were notified by mail. Uh, notifications were sent to the 300 foot radius of the project and we have the certificate of mailing. Uh, and then the last issue, uh, it appears an environmental review was not conducted. And that's um, a response, our response to that is an environmental review of the project was done. 
under uh, ENV 2020-904 CE, and it was a class three and class 32 exemption issued by the Department of City Planning. And it analyzed both the neighboring sites together uh, cumulatively. And this concludes the staff presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, it appears we have a number of uh, appellants on this item. Uh, they'll have three minutes each to speak. Uh, and they, we can receive them in any order uh, the staff sees fit. David, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Just a moment, my apologies. John Browse, can you please press star nine to raise your hand? Do we have uh, appellants on this item? I got Turner, Alessandro, Allen, Browse. Can you please press star nine to raise your hand for this item? Appellants or applicants? They're all raising their hand again. Terry Kaufman, Messiah City Attorney's Office. Um, this is the time on item seven for the appellants to speak. Uh, I'll read their names. John Browse, Kimberly Turner, Sal Alessandro and Michelle and Eric Allen. This is your time to speak. Caller with the number ending in z 3025. Can you please press star six? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, good, hi, this is John Browse. Uh, I sent a letter uh, challenging the uh, viability of having uh, those size trucks up and down Goodland, which is a relatively substandard street. Full disclosure, I am an architect licensed architect for 30 years in this area. <clears throat> I currently have a project. Uh, interesting enough, it's only uh, a few doors down at the 3900 block of Goodland Avenue. And we went through this exploration of how we were going to uh, haul away uh, more than a thousand cubic yards and found it to be implausible. So we reduced and scaled back the project. Uh, my client uh, understands the sensitivity to the neighborhood. When uh, when we have uh, trash trucks and delivery trucks and whatnot up the area, uh, people don't 
um, paying attention to signs. We have only 22 foot roadway width. Uh, typical trucks are about nine feet wide. Cars are seven feet. And when you do the math, um, as it was said at the hearing, uh, the haul route hearing, uh, it doesn't work. The haul route will not work and it will be a, a recipe for disaster. Secondly, I wrote a letter to the developer and I did ask a question, maybe he thought it was rhetorical, but I asked what would happen if after the allotted 12 days, the work was unfinished. I haven't gotten an answer. I offered to meet with him. I offered to meet with any of the commissioners. Um, I live right up the street. I've got probably seven or eight projects that I've completed in that neighborhood alone, um, but I've worked uh, extensively throughout the Studio City Hillside districts, and I understand the technical challenges throughout. I do understand grading uh, report letters. I do understand uh, the, what's on the landslide. That, that particular street is subject to landslides and the conditions that are, are somewhat uh, vulnerable there. Um, but my main thing is I don't think this is plausible to expect that volume of dirt to be hauled every day for 12 days and meet the deadlines, um, given the, uh, the nature of that neighborhood. Uh, we have people who walk their dogs, their kids, and it's, it's just not suitable for that volume of work. It's, it's way, way, way beyond uh, what that, that neighborhood can handle. I'm happy to meet anybody anytime. I think I gave my phone number and address, so I look forward to talking to somebody, hopefully the developer, um, and or any of the city officials. Thank you for your time. Kimberly Turner, can you please press star nine to raise your hand? Caller with the number ending in 8815, can you please press star six to unmute yourself and then state your name? Hi, this is uh, Kimberly Turner. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi. Uh, well, I second everything John Browse said, and he, he knows, as he said, he's an architect. Uh, I also attended the virtual hearing on May 25th uh, regarding the export of 1,662 cubic yards from 3690 Goodland Avenue. Um, but as stated at the hearing, there are two lots currently occupied by one home right now, and the developer uh, plans to tear down the single home and build two houses. The address for the other portion of this property is 3696, and um, the amount of cubic yards is 1,963, which combined will be a total of 3,625 3, cubic yards from this project to be removed. It appears that he's trying to piecemeal it, so to get each part approved when it's a much bigger project than what he is claiming in this, in, uh, this hearing. Um, Goodland Avenue is an extremely narrow street and removing this amount of earth poses many dangers that were uh, enumerated by residents at the hearing. Um, this project will destroy the natural beauty and character of the neighborhood. I'm also worried about the mature native trees on the property as well as the wildlife connectivity since Goodland is part of the wildlife corridor. Um, but this is focusing on the hall route, so uh, I, I want to focus my comments. Um, the president of the commission rejected the application. He was the only one that seemed to understand that the narrowness of our street poses a safety risk to pedestrians and to properties. And he said that the hall work, the hall route doesn't work. Um, I, don't, I didn't see any restricted parking uh, suggestions incorporated, and we have parking on both sides of the street. It makes it uh, impossible uh, to, to uh, navigate the street. The street barely meets the fire department road width requirements. Uh, in fact, I have a, a, a personal story to relate. Um, I was late for my own mother's funeral in August of 2019 because a fire truck was stuck in the middle of Goodland Avenue with no way of moving forward or backward. 
until cars were moved. So that gives you an idea of how, um, how narrow this road is. Um, the hauling route for 3690 must not be considered in a vacuum, but along with the hauling route for 3696. I have no idea how many hauling days there will be when considering both lots. Um, uh, will it be double the amount of hauling days? None of these questions have been answered by the board and the practicalities along with the restricted parking must be considered. Our neighborhood and its residents from infants to the elderly must be kept safe. Um, people walk all the time and uh, we deserve your reconsideration of this permit. Um, I respectfully ask you to reconsider your decision. Thank you very much. Caller with the number ending in 4858, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? And then state your name and the item you're speaking on. Hi, my name is Cindy. I'd like to speak on item 15. Um, caller, right now we are on item seven. When we get to item 15, we will call on your number. Thank you. Sal Alessandro, can you please press star nine to raise your hand? Or Michelle Eric Allen. Caller with the number ending in 3763. Can you please press star six to unmute yourself? I can you hear me? Caller, we can hear you. Can you state your name? Yes, my name is Sal Alessandro. I live at 3672 Goodland. Um, I opposed the project and the proposed project at 3690 and 3690 Goodland Avenue. Um, we all understand this hearing is only for 3690 Goodland Avenue. However, the builder plans to excavate both 3690 and 3696 at the same time, which will total 3,625 cubic yards, not just the 1,662 uh, yards covered by the hearing. Goodland Avenue is a small residential neighborhood with approximately 111 homes, and we all oppose this proposed project in its entirety. Uh, this massive earthwork project is on the same scale as an apartment building with a subterranean parking lot and is not suitable for a small neighborhood with narrow streets. We feel the excavating and displacing of this many cubic yards of soil will dis destabilize the hill that separates Goodland Avenue from Sunswept Drive, regardless of any applicable general plan or zoning ordinances to mitigate the risk. There are documented cases of landslides on the same side of Goodland Avenue, just a few homes away because of overbuilding and displacing large amounts of soil. On the same side of Goodland Avenue, just a few homes away, you can feel homes vibrating when trucks drive on sunswept drive. Um, and according to the Technical Advisory CEQA review of the housing project, this project is located on a, uh, a landslide hazard. And, and again, we feel regardless of any applicable general plan or zoning orders, the developer, developer will not be able to mitigate the risk that will be produced by this. Um, with all this information alone, we would wonder why the city would want to expose themselves to the liability of an unfortunate event because, as we all know, a developer can always file for bankruptcy, but the city cannot. We have six attorneys that live on the street, and they are standing by and watching every aspect of this project closely. Uh, concerning the public health issue, there's a reasonable possibility that the project will have a project-specific significant effect on the environment and the residents due to circumstances created by the excavation and consistent loud noise from dump trucks for over 12 continuous days, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and when you add that plus the constant and consistent loud noise of building two homes simultaneously for 18 months or longer, that makes it even more unbearable. Um, according to a study out of Germany's Main University Medical Center, an increasing amount of noise can actually throw your heart out of rhythm. Chronic exposure to neighborhood noise, especially if it includes transportation noise activity, 
may lose, uh, lead to higher blood pressure and increased risk of fatal heart attack, according to a 2011 report by the World Health Organization. Um, a lot of the residents that are older are in very, very close proximity to the project. They're really at risk. There's about four residents right now that have verified existing heart issues. And, and, and to be respectful, uh, I would hope that you can cue from the recent firework explosion in South L.A. where two people have died time. from heart attacks at a very possible result. Caller, you've exhausted that, your That minutes. completes your time, Caller. Thank you. David Levi, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Hi, this is Danielle Heyman and uh, David uh, Levi. Um, we actually have on the call Murray, who um, is going to be speaking on our behalf. Or would you like us to speak? I'm I don't believe we have that representative's number, but you can go ahead and give your public testimony. Um, okay. Uh, we, I think, so, I'm sorry, I just got a message from Murray. Um, he should be calling in any minute, but uh, we do have this application, which is a by right application um, that's been submitted to the Hollerow Commission, um, and we did we did uh, state that these two houses would be built concurrently. The applications were submitted together. Um, we are here to answer any questions, but uh, we prefer if Murray was to speak on our behalf. Thank you so much. Um, we will now move to a report from staff on this item. To address any of the issues raised during the applicant or appellant testimony, if there is. Um, yes. To address any of the questions, yes. Dean Alkanawi, uh, Building and Safety. Uh, so in terms of the uh, hauling trucks, uh, Department of Transportation and Bureau of State Services drove the route and provided the recommendations and recommended the bottom dump trucks. Uh, and so that's what the staff report states. Uh, if they're the smaller trucks would be the 10 wheeler dump trucks. Um, if that is something to be revised, then we would need to increase the number of hauling days. And so depending on whether it's uh, best to use a larger truck and complete the project in less time or um, having smaller trucks and having more frequent truck trips, uh, you know, both provide their uh, benefits and inconveniences to the neighborhood. Uh, so currently the staff report indicated it's, uh, bottom dump trucks. Uh, regarding the other items, again, the soils approval letter does address uh, the soil stability issues and the staff recommendations and the staff report do indicate several conditions, um, indicating the route, the number of trucks allowed in the neighborhood, uh, placement of flag attendants. And so uh, we believe these mitigation measures uh, are sufficient. Uh, this concludes the staff response. Thank you so much. Uh, now, have we exhausted public comment on this item? We have one caller on the queue. All right, we'll take that call now. Caller, if you called in with a uh, private number, can you please press star six to unmute yourself now?
That exhausts our speakers on the queue. Thank you so much. If there are no questions or comments from members on this item, uh, we'll, we will ask uh, Representative Council District 2 uh, to provide comments. Good afternoon, Council Members. Carl Jerosian, Chief of Staff to Council Member Paul Kikorian. Um, we, we would like to add additional conditions to the specific conditions specified in the um, earlier stated the staff report. We would like that the 12 days of hauling for 3690 be concurrent with the hauling days of 3696 Goodland. Um, so we don't have 26 days of hauling, but um, just the already approved 14. No parking shall be allowed on one side of the street during the hauling days um, in consultation with DOT on which side has the least amount of parking spots to be removed. All staging to occur, to occur on the property. No parking by construction crews on the hillside. Construction crews to park on the property or to be shuttled from an offsite location uh, located north of Ventura Boulevard to the construction site. Six flag attendants um, during the hauling days as opposed to the two previously recommended by staff. Um, a notice be mailed or hand delivered to all residents uh, between on Goodland Avenue between Ventura Boulevard and the two dead ends of Goodland Avenue and Goodland Drive seven days prior to the hauling beginning to notify residents of this hauling. Also, this condition shall apply on any time that the road will be blocked because of large deliveries so that the neighbors know when the deliveries will, will occur. Um, no demo or grading shall occur until all permits and reports are issued for the site. Um, and um, that the street condition of Goodland Avenue be analyzed prior to the start of construction from Ventura Boulevard to Good the intersection of Goodland Avenue and Goodland Drive prior to the issuance and prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, that analysis be redone and any damages to the street be improved to a condition at or better than um, prior to construction. And lastly, we encourage that the developer meet with the community members and the neighbors um, on a regular basis and provide a hotline phone number for them to be able to contact them in, in case of uh, concerns or emergencies. With those conditions, we would like those conditions added to the staff report spe specified conditions. Thank you so much. Uh, if there's no further discussion on the item, uh, I'll move that we uh, deny the appeal and uh, include the conditions as outlined by uh, Council District 2. Second. Uh, seconded by Mr. Cedillo. Uh, can we uh, read the specific instructions and uh, then call the roll? Uh, yes, the specific instruction is to deny the appeals filed by Browse, Turner, Alessandro, and Allen, and thereby sustain the determination of the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners to approve an application to export 1,662 cubic yards of earth for the property located at 3690 North Goodland Avenue, subject to conditions of approval and subject to the additional conditions that were read into the record by the representative of Council District 2. Thank you so much. Can you call the roll? Councilmember Marquis Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Aye. Five ayes. The vote is unanimous. Thank you so much. Uh, that item moves forward. That takes us to item number nine. Uh, item number nine is a, a categorical exemption from environmental requirements, a report from the West uh, Area Planning Commission, and an appeal filed by Margaret Malloy in approving various land use entitlements for expansion of an existing square uh, restaurant. Uh, with additional square feet of storage and a two-story addition um, of a new service floor area, an outdoor recreation area, bar, office, and storage area 
for properties located at 205, 207, 209, and 213 Ocean Front Walk in Council District 11. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a report from Department of uh, Building and Safety. Good afternoon, council members. This is Bindu Cannon with City Planning. So item number nine is an appeal of the specific plan exception, project permit compliance review, coastal development permit, conditional use beverage, and a zone variance for the expansion of an existing re restaurant. The expansion includes the addition of a 918 square foot storage area, a two story 1,709 uh, foot square foot addition comprised of 930 square feet of service floor area, outdoor recreation area, bar, office, and storage area. The project will maintain 16 parking spaces, provide three new parking spaces, and 40 bicycle spaces on site for the proposed addition. 16 additional parking spaces will be provided at 250 Marine Street. The appeal was filed by one aggrieved party, Margaret Malloy. The appellant raised several appeal points in opposition of the project, including a lack of parking, unpermitted lot consolidation, cumulative impacts from over-concentration of alcohol licenses, that the proposed rec recreation area should not be used and associated with a restaurant, and the county assessor's office um, issuing incorrect APNs. The appellant further argues that the project um, removed existing parking by illegally expanding a service floor area without authorization. The, the appellant statements are not supported by substantial evidence, although a specific plan exception was requested because the applicant cannot provide all of the required spaces on site. Off-site parking is required as a condition of approval. The applicant will maintain the, all of the existing uh, parking spaces uh, that's currently there. The, the, the applicant does not seek any new uh, alcohol licenses. Rather, they are seeking to expand a long established restaurant. The recreation areas service floor area was included in the parking calculations when we determined the parking requirements for the expansion of the restaurant. Staff trans, uh, transmitted a letter to the council file on July 28th, providing detailed responses to each, appell, uh, each of the appeal points raised by the appellant. So the appellant has failed to meet her burden as to new uh, substantial evidence that was presented showing that the Area Planning Commission erred in its action relative to the determination. So staff recommends that the Plum Committee uh, deny the appeal, determine that the project is compatible with the Venice Coastal Zone Specific Plan, and that the appellant has not provided sufficient evidence to support her appeal. So that concludes my presentation, and staff is available for questions. All right, if there are no questions or comments, we'll go to our appellant. Margaret Malloy, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Hello, how long do I have? We can hear you. How long do I have? You have three minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I filed this appeal because the Los Angeles uh, County Records and Zenith Records produced by the Department of the City Planning and the ABC records and the Coastal Commission records do not, con do not conform to each other. So Los Angeles County records show a typical change in ownership for two and a half oceanfront walk on September 27, 2002, and the sale of 13 oceanfront walk also on the same day, the buyer was listed as Joanne Stabinger, Ms. Stabinger is the current property owner. Rec County rec assessor records for these two APNs and four lots show a 2,700 
and 17 square foot building built in 1946 on, on 13,000 square feet of property, including 213 Oceanfront Walk, which is currently characterized and has been since 2002 as a commercial vacant lot. Meanwhile, this uh, applicant reopened the former waterfront in September 2018, encompassing the entire four lots. The service floor area encompasses the entire four lots. The, the very first sentence of the staff report is the um, expansion of a 900 and something square foot storage area. That's a former independent business. That was a skate and surf rental store. This person has already displaced that business, has taken it over and encroached onto the public sidewalk for dining in front of what was a former independent business. They're operating a complete service floor area on the lot at 213 Oceanfront Walk. This is not a vacant lot. This is absolutely prime Venice Oceanfront Walk real estate in the dual permit zone of the coastal zone, making a fortune. You, can, you just cannot allow this. We need one set of laws in Venice. We ask for it all the time. These are the people on the Venice Business uh, Improvement District castigating unhoused people for petty crimes. I want you to look at all crimes. I want you to look at all crimes equally. That is what we would consider equity. There's absolutely no way that this should have been approved by planning or the West LA Planning Commission based on the conflicting reports and the absolute misrepresentation of a 4,000 square foot vacant lot at 213 Ocean Pro Park. It's outrageous, you know, stop the clock. Investigate property use in Venice. That's your time, specifically caller. Specifically in the commercial zone. Caller, that's your time. We have an applicant. No, there's no applicant. No applicant. Uh, if there, do we have public comment speakers on this item? No, we have no callers on the queue. No public comment speakers on this item. We'll hear uh, from members if there are no questions or comments from members. Uh, we will hear from a representative from Council District 11. Uh, good afternoon, committee chair Harry Felsen and honorable council members Jason Douglas, uh, senior planning deputy with council district 11. Uh, the council member supports the project uh, proposed at 205 Oceanfront Walk as it has earned broad support in the community and the establishment has been a fixture uh, for the Oceanfront Walk community as a visitor serving use. Uh, the council member supports uh, the Department of City Planning's recommendation and requests that Plum adopts the approval conditions made by the West Los Angeles Area Planning Commission um, and to approve the project. Thank you. Thank you so much. If there are no more questions or comments from members, uh, we'll bring this item to the vote. I'll move uh, that we had deny the appeal and sustain uh, the determination by the West Area Planning Commission. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Cedillo. Please call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo. Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield. Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas. Aye. Councilmember John Lee. Aye. Five ayes. The vote is unanimous. All right. Uh, that takes us to item number 10. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Item number 10 is the um, uh, uh, environmental findings and an appeal filed by Susan Winsberg from the determination of the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners, which approved an application to export 5,800 cubic yards of earth for a property located at 4629-4651 West Mulbert Avenue in Council District 13. All right, do we have a report from staff? Yes, uh, Dean Al-Kanawi, 
Building and Safety. This hall route was approved on May 25th, 2021 by the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners and staff recommendations were adopted as board action for the export in the amount of 5,835 cubic yards. Uh, the issue in the, in the appeal is requesting an alternate to the hauling route that's specified um, and our staff response is that the proposed haul route was assessed by the Department of Transportation and the Bureau of Street Services. And we have to place conditions um, to provide further safety uh, for this haul route, uh, including flag attendance, one at the project site and one at the intersection of Mobber Avenue and Rodney Drive, as well as um, a condition specifying that no parking signs be located along the project site on Mobbert Avenue. This concludes this staff presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, do we, if there are no questions or uh, comments uh, from the committee, we'll ask our appellant to speak at this time. Hello, thank you. My name is Susan Winsberg. I'm the appellant. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, object to the fact that I received no notification of uh, that my appeal was going to be heard today. And if I hadn't been alerted by a friend, I would have missed this meeting. So, uh, I mean, this is a fundamental element of due process, and I was uh, essentially denied. And I don't know, I don't know why that happened. Anyway, um, regarding the hall route for the Mo Mobart project, this is a very straightforward request. Um, I'm a music teacher at the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music, which is at 4652 Hollywood Boulevard. And we're not asking for very much. I mean, the, the trucks idling in front of our music school where kids are coming and going, spewing uh, diesel exhaust and rumbling and vibrating will totally get in the way of our process of educating children. Um, this this is ex extremely disruptive and um, it seems unnecessary. It seems like the trucks could turn right on Sunset from Vermont, left on Rodney and left on Moburg and not even come near Hollywood Boulevard. It not only will disturb the conservatory, but it will disturb all the businesses along Hollywood Boulevard. There are, there are a lot of uh, cafes and restaurants and there are residents nearby also so it just doesn't seem like a very large ask here. Um, you know, you accepted the staff report, but you didn't ask for community input on this. Um, the, the community would not be okay with trucks idling on Hollywood Boulevard, I can assure you, or even on Vermont near Hollywood. There's too much going on around there. So we would request that I mean, there's a lot of issues with this Moberg project, period. But today we're just focusing on the hall route, and we don't feel like we're asking very much. So please, um, please reconsider this hall route for the sake of the businesses and the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music and children and health and air and everything. It's, uh, it would be very nice. Thank you very much. There's no uh, applicant testimony uh, and no comments from members of the committee. Uh, we'll take public comment at this time on this specific item. We don't, there are no callers on this item? Caller with the number ending in 0242. Can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Hi. So can you hear me? We can hear you. Perfect. So I'm a longtime resident as well as uh, a, a member of the Los Angeles Neighborhood Preservation Coalition. And um, I, I echo uh, Susan Winsberg's uh, comments. Uh, first of all, I, I, I think it's wrong that you guys, uh, you guys do this a lot about notifications, not notifying people. Uh, I agree with her, it's not too much to ask. I think it's wrong and unconscionable to actually interfere with any school activities. Her request for the change of the hall route, which is Vermont, 
Sunset Rodney Malbert. It's far more intelligent and safer because there's a signal drought. And I ask you to please support Susan Winsberg's appeal to have a change in the haul route. And as a, another comment, you guys continually cater to the developers and absolutely no consideration for the community input. It's some of a standard thing. I hope you guys change. I hope you guys develop a conscience and see both sides of it. In this case, it's a very simple matter. Students come first, you know, and, and this Thank insignificant you, caller. That's request. Caller with a number ending in 7856. Can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Caller, we're not on item 15 right now. When we get to item 15, they'll call on your number. <laughs> yes, they asked me to unmute. I didn't know why. Um, should I remute the star nine? Um, you can press star nine when we get to 15. <laughs> Hold on now. the number ending in 5629. Can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Will Seitz. I am um, with the applicant, Malbert LA6 LLC. We, um, we don't have any, any issue with the, the alternate route suggested by the, the appellant, although obviously have to defer to DOT and building and safety staff on on you know their route recommendations and why they recommend it, but just as a matter of you know wanting to be good neighbors, we 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 are not opposed to changing the route to accommodate them. Thank you. Oh, get them off the phone. Okay. That concludes our callers for this item. All right. Uh, thank you. If there are no questions or comments from members, uh, we'll hear from uh, Representative Council District 13. Good afternoon. My name is Craig Bullock with Council District 13. I wanted to uh, convey our concurrence with the recommendations made by the Department of Transportation and Public Works and Building and Safety to deny the appeal. We are, however, willing to work with the applicant um, for alternative routes, but at the moment, we believe the appeal should be denied. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Bullock. Uh, I will move the recommendation that we deny the appeal and sustain the determination of the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Lee. Please call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Ferris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Seville? Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. Councilmember Mark Brindley Thomas? Councilmember John Lee? Aye. It's four eyes. Thomas, all right. Thank you, sir. All right, that carries. Uh, to everyone on the phone uh, who's called in on item number uh, 15, um, I am asking the committee that we grant a continuance on this item to September 7th, 2021. Uh, again, item number 15, so if you're on the phone for number 15, you should hang up because uh, we're going to continue that item. Uh, should we get the votes, we'll continue that item until uh, September 7th. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Lee. Please call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Aye. Four ayes to continue the item. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number 11. Uh, yes, item number 11 is a report from the planning department uh, 
for the construction of a new mixed-use building for, of, consisting of 198 new residential units at, uh, for property located at 1400 to 1440 North Vine Street and adjacent properties in Council District 13. All right, is there a report from Department of City Planning on this? Mr. Ridley Thomas is eagerly awaiting to hear from you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Council Members. Alex Chong with LA City Planning. The project involves the construction of an eight story mixed use building with 198 residential dwelling units and 16,000 square feet of commercial restaurant space. The project will, will provide 21 affordable housing units or 11% reserved for very low income households for the proposed project at 1400 Vine Street in the Hollywood Community Plan area. The proposed project requires, and the applicant has filed for approval of case number CPC 2021-3871-DB-MCUP-SPR-VHCA for a density bonus, master conditional use permit and site plan review. As part of the applicant's request is a determination that the project qualifies as a sustainable communities project exemption. An initial public hearing was held on July 28, 2021. While the requested entitlement applications will be acted upon by the City Planning Commission, consistent with Public Resources Code Section 21155.1, the determination that the project qualifies for the sustainable communities project exemption shall be made by the legislative body. As such, what is before you today is the project's consistency with the criteria necessary to qualify for a sustainable communities project exemption. The planning department has reviewed the project and assessed its consistency with the criteria necessary to qualify for a sustainable communities project exemption. The department has found that the project does meet the necessary requirements to qualify for the exemption. Among other things, the project is located within a half mile of major transit stop it provides 11% of the total number of units as affordable for very low income households. It will be 15% more energy efficient than required and 25% more water efficient than the average household. That said, staff recommends that the Plum Committee find that the project complies with the requirements of CEQA for use of a sustainable communities project exemption and further recommends for council action to adopt the project's sustainable communities project exemption. That concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Um, do we have a public comment on this item? We have one caller on the queue. Caller with the number ending in 8990. Can you please press star six to unmute yourself now? Eight nine nine zero. Please press star six to unmute. Hello. Hi. Can you hear Ca me? Caller, we can hear you. Oh, hi. I'm so sorry. You know what? I was in line for the previous item and I never got called on and it must have gotten carried over to this one. Um, I wanted to support Susan Winsberg Thank about you, the whole we thing. Can't, with we can't there. take your comment and I just for this item. To, yeah, uh, on item 10 about the whole... Uh, yeah, we're on item 11. We have to go to the next caller. Thank you. Hi. Ah, you didn't... Sorry. That exhausts our callers. Thank you so much. If there are no questions or comments from members of the committee, uh, we'll ask a representative from the council district uh, to weigh in on this item. Good afternoon. My name is Craig Bullock with Council Member Mitch O'Farrell's office. We concur with the Department of City Planning's assessment that this project does qualify for a skip aid. We'll more articulate our views on the entitlements at a future date when that is before us. Thank you. Thank you so much. If there's uh, no further discussion, um, I will uh, move that we approve the Project exemption from CEQA pursuant uh, to the Public Resources Code. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Lee. Please call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Harris-Dawson. Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo. 
Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfeld? Aye. Councilmember Mark Burley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Aye. Five votes? Five ayes. The vote is unanimous. All right, that takes us to item number 12. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Item number 12 are, uh, is the uh, environmental findings report from the Planning Commission and an appeal filed by uh, Erica Moore relative to the construction of a new four-story multifamily apartment building f consisting of 77 dwelling units at 1600 to 1614 East Venice Boulevard in Council District 11. All right, uh, do we have a report uh, from staff on this item? Hello, this is Esther Serrato from City Planning. Item 12 is a CEQA appeal for a project located at 1600 through 1614 Venice Boulevard in the Venice Community Plan area. The project consists of three apartment Excuse me. The project consists of the demolition of three existing apartment buildings containing nine dwelling units and the construction of a new four story 77 dwelling unit apartment building containing seven units reserved for extremely low income households and one level of subterranean parking. The appellant is appealing the use of the class 32 categorical exemption. The appellant argues that the categorical exemption does not apply due to cumulative impacts to traffic and parking. The appellant further argues that the project will have an adverse impact on utilities. The appellant has not presented substantial evidence that the project meets any of the exceptions contained in section 15300.2 of the CEQA guidelines and has not presented substantial evidence that the project does not meet any of the qualifying criteria for the class 32 categorical exemption for infill development. Staff submitted a letter dated June 10, 2021 to the file, which addresses each appeal point. Staff recommends that the Plum Committee recommend for City Council to deny the appeal and determine based on the whole of the administrative record that the project is exempt from CEQA pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15332, class 32, and there is no substantial evidence demonstrating that an exemption, or rather an exception to a categorical exemption applies. That concludes staff presentation. Staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, now we will hear uh, from the appellant or their representative. Erica Moore, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Erica Moore, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? I can see that you're called in. You just need to press star six to unmute yourself. Hello? Okay, you guys gonna um, start me? Are you ready? Yes, One, you have three minutes. Three. Okay, hi, my name is Erica Moore, and I've been renting a small storefront for my catering business across the street from the corner of 1600 through 1614 Venice for 37 years. Many longtime neighbors of all ages who lived at 1600 Venice worked here with me before their homes were torn down and they were displaced into the city of Hawthorne. I am very familiar with East Venice. We must use evaluation tools, CEQA, to see what the land and this area can tolerate. What is the best use of this property? We must be responsible with our resources. Housing is needed now in a timely manner. Let's look at the facts, because the facts of this specific area in Venice are that a project across the street is not tolerating what is being done to it. For almost three years, 1503 Venice has been underway. It is a gigantic gaping hole with pocket pools of water, despite nine plus huge water tanks pumping 24 seven for a year and a half. Those pumps and water towers have flooded leaks onto Venice Boulevard often. They have taken away two full blocks of parking for one and a half years. And who knows how much longer it's gonna be because they can't build on it. There was no secret review. 
Do we really think that the water table is going to magically disappear? And what about the ground movement that's happening with that water displacement? Another terrible impact is existing housing is being lost. Next door to 1503 Venice, the apartment that was full of longtime tenants is now vacant. It is unlivable to be next to this project. We cannot afford to lose existing housing. It is quite probable the same thing will happen with the 1600-1614 Venice project if it proceeds as penned. I know 90-year-old Ruth, a 50-year resident, living behind the site. She feels forced to sell her beloved little house because she's going to lose 100% of her backyard sunlight, and she feels unsafe with the upcoming construction. The tenants in the 1920s brick building that's next door to 1600 Venice, they're going to most likely fall victim as well. I believe there can be a different outcome if sequel reviews are done. Again, what is the most sustainable use of this land? It is ludicrous for the city to initiate Garcetti's Green Streets projects, etc., if you're going to green light projects in direct contradiction. This project directly impacts tree planting. The five foot setback is ridiculously small and not congruent with our street at all. We must have CEQA reports done to best serve the land and its surroundings. CEQA was created out of a need. Why are we circumventing and undermining a system that not only protects the land, but the people who are impacted by what happens on said land? I cannot find the logic in ignoring the standard of performing a CEQA review. I implore you now to take a stand and use good conscience and common sense. Let's follow the guidelines of CEQA, especially for a project of this magnitude. Honor the true intentions of JJJ. We can do better and build housing without displacing the community that already is thriving here. Despite our differences, we all want the same thing. Use of our precious land to provide shelter, safety, and enjoyment to our community. There is so much to say, multiple issues that is, there's just not ample time to address, and most disheartening is my concern that my words are falling on deaf ears. The decisions are already made to rubber stamp this project, and this is deeply disturbing for so many reasons. Please prove me wrong and evaluate you, the Paula. true impact That's this project time. will have on its current, in its current iteration. Please. That's your time. Thank you. So I believe that we do not have an applicant uh, for this one. So uh, do we have callers from the public on this item? There's an applicant identified to speak on item 12. Their hand isn't raised. All right, if you're the applicant, now is the time to raise your hand. Matthew, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? We already continue. Matthew Hayden. Matthew Hayden, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Uh, sorry for the, the technical delay there. Uh, honorable city council members of the Plum Committee, Matthew Hayden, Hayden Planning, the applicant's land use consultant. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. In summary, we request that the committee deny the appeal before you today for this project. Um, as well presented by the city planning staff in their um, thorough uh, written staff report and presentation to you today, there is no basis for this appeal. Uh, the project was originally filed uh, three years ago in 2019 and it continues to be delayed and we need this project to move forward. The six appeal points that were submitted on January 20th uh, to the uh, to the city council, uh, five of these are not even matters related to CEQA, and as explained in the, the staff report, you know there's also no basis to those uh, appeal points as well. With regard to the CEQA appeal points that are being made by the appellant, um, these are not supported by any technical analysis, data, or substantial evidence that's in the public record. The appeal points are the appellant's opinion, and as such, this is a baseless appeal. We respect the appellant's right to appeal and the city's development review process, but it's without merit. More importantly, at a time when housing provision is of the utmost importance around the country, and especially here in Los Angeles, it's taken over three years now to get this project approved. 
It's a straightforward project. It's well situated on R4 zone multifamily property that fronts along a major thoroughfare in the community, Venice Boulevard, connected to transit. And most importantly, it will provide seven affordable units for a period of 55 years to extremely low income households. In addition, the 70 market rate units will be subject to the city's rent stabilization ordinance and the protections that it offers to tenants. This project was approved by the planning director and by the city planning commission who denied the appeals of the TOC entitlement and it's been planned to have been otherwise ready to move forward to construction. <laughs> Accordingly, we respectfully request that the Plum Committee deny this CEQA appeal and allow this project to move forward so that the 77 new units of housing, including the seven affordable units, can be built and serve the community. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And we're available if there's any further questions. Uh, I am Clark Brown. Since 1976, I have lived and owned at 2610 Abbott Kinney Boulevard, which is a half mile from the project. I object to the 77 unit project because only eight of its proposed units are two bedroom units. The rest are one bedroom or studio apartments, which are not big enough for families. Venice needs to build apartments for moderate income families because Venice lacks housing for this population, which it needs to be a racially, economically, Thank you, and socially Collar, that's your time. equitable. Hi, my name is Donald again. Uh, I'm talking about that property, on, uh, item number 11, and the property over uh, in Venice. There, uh, I don't really know who owns it, but uh, I, I don't, I don't want you guys to turn it over to a bunch of green holes. Uh, you know, there's a problem over there. They're, um, they're overrunning property. Uh, those guys are some uh, really uh, defective, dangerous kind of guys over there doing weird shit. Uh, that uh, I, I really worry that if, if uh, the mayor got pissed off and took over somebody's property that they're not supposed to or something or they, uh, whatever's going on or something uh, that they don't turn it over to those guys no matter what. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, there's a problem. Uh, this guy they could overrun your property and then uh, after they have it for a while, like, they try to paint it green and then they slam it out and they try and sell it. You know, it's, it's real ugly over there. It's like war. Uh, and believe me, I know I've been fighting those guys for a long time. The, the Army wasn't defeated in California until 1978. You guys know that, right? I'm done. Hello. Can Caller, you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Hello. We can hear you. Uh, how much time? Do, how much time do I have? You have one minute. One minute. Okay. We pretend to care about the environment and talk about a green new deal, but we already have a great California, California Environmental Quality Act. Then we carve out an exemption for TOC projects like this one. In fact, the bigger, more impactful the project or program, the more likely that it gets the sidestep environmental protections. We pretend to value equity, but instead of making improvements to bad conditions in our most environmentally deprived neighborhoods, we exempt TOC projects from CEQA, which guarantees an inferior environment in minority and low-income neighborhoods. We pretend to be environmentally friendly by drastically reducing parking requirements for TOC projects on the assumption that it will get everybody to ride public transportation but in this case, the bus service has actually been cut back even before, before COVID. We pretend to support our public schools, but then we build a project within walking distance of eight schools with only one-tenth of the apartments suitable for families. I think it's time to stop. That's pretending. your time, caller.
Caller, you can begin your statement. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, my name is Kate Scanlon Double. I'm an East Venice uh, resident. I've been following this project, uh, working closely with Erica and uh, the 33 um, appellants. And again, I have to reiterate what the gentleman before said and what uh, the two gentlemen and Erica said is that, you know, these aren't market, these mostly are market rate apartments. They're not really suitable for families. We have other public resources. These folks who can afford market rate in Venice are not taking the bus. That's a fantasy. And I think we need, and I want the city, and I want, please, council folk, please, let's deal in reality. And yet you'll say, hey, it's the sequel thing, and, and, and that's what's at issue here today. But really, let's go deeper. Another really important resource are public schools and for people to have access and for, for neighborhoods to anchor themselves in these community-based... Um, That's your uh, time, caller. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can hear you, caller. Oh, hi. Hello. My name is Paula Pini. I am a East Venice Neighborhood Association member, and I live in proximity of this project. Uh, I'm just reiterating what my previous uh, friends and callers have uh, mentioned. One thing that I feel the city is failing, Angelinos, is with this uh, TOC and how it was translated from JGJ. I assure I'm not alone when I feel abused and played by the city. I trust the city <laughs> to do better for its citizens to work on equity, to really be progressive and give a chance to all these residents, yet the city seems to only have work for the powerful and connected. These projects are disliked throughout the city, not because of anti-density sentiment, but because they completely uh, shut out the neighborhood and communities from the conversation. This project, this appeal is only about CEQA, but we asked, we tried to meet with the developer to make this project better. We were never against the 77 unit. We were never against affordable housing. We were never against this project to begin with. We just wanted to improve it for our community. And Thank we you, Paula. That's your time. That concludes our callers for this item. All right. Thank you so much. If there's uh, no discussion by members I'll ask a representative of the council district to comment on this matter uh, May chair uh, Harris Austin uh, with council members uh, it's Jason Douglas again for the record uh, senior planning deputy for council district 11 uh, the council member supports the department of city planning's recommendation to deny the appeal at 1600 Venice for class 32 categorical exemption from uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if there's no discussion or uh, questions, I'll move that we uh, deny the appeal and sustain the Planning Commission's determination. Is there a second? Second, Seconded by Mr. Ridley Thomas. Please call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo. Yes. Councilmember Bob Bloomingfield. Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas. Aye. Council member John Lee. Aye. Five ayes. The vote is unanimous. All right. That takes us to item number 13. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Item number 13 is the environmental findings report from the Planning Commission and appeal filed by uh, People Organized for Westside Renewal, Citizens Preserving Venice, Lydia Ponce, and Margaret Malloy relative to the construction of a three-story mixed-use project with nine dwelling units at 811 to 815 South Oceanfront Walk in Council District 11. All right, do we have a report from Department of City Planning on this item? This is Ira Brown, City Planning. Item 13 is an appeal of a decision by the City Planning Commission for a case number CPC-2019 dash 2282 dash CDP dash NEL dash SPP dash DB dash CUB for a project located at 811 and 815 Oceanfront Walk in the Venus Community Plan area. The project consists of the demolition of nine existing 
dwelling units and the construction of a three-story mixed-use building with nine dwelling units, setting aside one dwelling unit for a low-income household and a ground floor restaurant requesting for on-site sales of alcohol. 30 parking spaces are provided on the ground floor and subterranean level. Mm. The appellant is appealing the entire decision by the City Planning Commission. The appellant argues that the proposed project violates the Mellow Act and interim administrative procedures. Specifically, the appellant argues that the demolition of a 100% residential structure for a residential mixed-use structure is prohibited. Further, the appellant argues that the HCLA Mellow determination did not account for all of the dwelling units on site. Lastly, the appellant argues that the proposed development is inconsistent with the existing neighborhood character. As documented in the City Planning Commission decision letter, staff made the appropriate findings to support the density bonus, mellow ad compliance review, and coastal development permit. Staff recommends the denial of appeal as the appellant has failed to adequately disclose how the city error or abused its discretion. Staff submitted a letter dated May 26, 2021 to the council file, which addressed each appeal point. That concludes staff's presentation. Staff is available for questions. All right, thank you so much. We will uh, now go to our appellants. It looks like we have uh, a few and they'll have three minutes each. So if you can be ready and uh, have your phone unmuted and be prepared to respond when called upon. Hi, this is Robin Rudisell. Am I loud enough? You are. Great. Um, I'll take the first two minutes. Um, this appeal is about protecting housing from commercial interests wanting to take over our 100% housing developments in coastal commercial zones. A similar mixed-use restaurant project for this same property was previously denied by the Area Planning Commission because the Mellow Act does not allow a residential structure to be demolished for purposes of a non-residential mixed-use project. Planning Commissioner Joe Halper said that at that hearing, this project is in stark contradiction to the city's policy direction. His statement is still applicable today. Preventing displacement of existing residents is one of the main goals of our housing element. To allow this project with no replacement affordable housing and to turn 100% residential to commercial mixed use is the epitome of structural racism in land use. The Coastal Mellow Law is crystal clear. It does not allow demolitions for projects that have any non-residential use. It does not allow for a commercial component as long as some level of residential use is maintained. Nowhere does the Mellow Act allow for any form of commercial development to replace housing except coastal dependent uses. The law says that a demolition of a residential structure for purposes of a non-residential use is prohibited. This demolition would be for purposes of a non-residential use, a restaurant, which is prohibited. Also, we've proven with substantial evidence in the council file that the mellow finding of one-year vacancy is erroneous because there was occupancy during the one-year period prior to the application. Lastly, the applicant will try to convince you that the coastal regulations require a mixed-use project in a commercial zone this is simply not true, as the coastal regulations only state that mixed-use projects should be encouraged in commercial zones. This project would serve to perpetuate structural racism in land use in Venice and would violate the Mellow Act. Please either require modification of this project to be 100% residential or deny it. Thank you. Bill Prylucky, can you please um, press star six to unmute yourself? Oh, hi, okay, I found, I figured it out. Hi, this is Bill Prylucky, Executive Director of People Organized for Westside Renewal. You can hear me now, yes? We yes. can hear you. Okay, thank you. So yes, as our co-appellant, uh, was stating we believe that this project really is about the sort of ways that structural racism plays into land use. So this project consists of 
was actually 10 RSO units, not nine, 10 RSO units that were taken off the rental market through the Ellis Act, but then continued to use uh, for both a residential purpose as well as an unpermitted commercial purpose. That was all allowed to go on for uh, nearly a decade. Um, and then now that it's convenient uh, for the profits of private land use development, we have uh, all these rules that we have to follow and we can't find a way to account for the previous use of these buildings. Uh, they were used off book as rental units. We know from multiple community members who testified, who uh, confirmed to us, this is all in the record, that these units definitely were being used for low income housing on the beach, uh, primarily by residents of color. Uh, and this just goes to show you that our land use process really works for land use applicants, but it does not work to protect existing communities. We urge you to encourage a 100% residential proper, uh, project that does much more to preserve affordability in the coastal zone. Thank you. Lydia Ponce, Venice. You know, let's talk about the sacrifice zone that Venice once was when the oil derricks were built and the white linen sheets were billowing in the uh, wind. And you could see the pictures in black and white uh, photos. And it was okay to have these oil derricks and wells because um, next to homes, small little modest homes along the beach, because black and brown folk live there. Our community has changed as the hyper gentrification. The beachfront properties are long sought after. With every appeal denied, you are supporting basically uh, genocide and white supremacy because the majority of the people who are the applicants are white. The colonized settler ideology that supports capitalism that really, really affronts the racial and social divide with unhoused and housed and who can afford to live in Venice Beach. It's about displacement based on race and not people not knowing their rights. So in the last 15 years, we've seen people being dumped in Venice. These 10 affordable units would be a perfect match to the truth that we Caller, know. Caller, that's as your time. Margaret Malloy, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? Margaret Malloy, please press star six. Jim Mirez, can you please press star six? Did that work? Yes, we can hear you, caller. Hi, um, I'm not an appellant. I'm not sure why you're calling me. Um, I did raise my hand to speak. I don't want to speak out of turn. My name is James Mirez and I'm the president of the Venice Neighborhood Council. Do I speak now thank, or wait? Thank, thanks so much for that information. We'll try to get to the right person. So do I re-raise my hand? Yes, you can continue speaking. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, make the, the, the point that um, a letter was sent uh, to, to uh, Zoning Administrator Ira Brown back in January of 2020. Um, a, a decision was uh, made by the Venice Neighborhood Council at the time to support the project. There were three conditions that uh, were, were specified at the time that the operator of the restaurant 
um, bring back the CUB license within 12 months of operation. I think that was, uh, uh, they wanted to have a short period of time because there was no operator um, being described at the time. Um, the second one, uh, the future operator of the restaurant will install scrubbers on the hood of the uh, exhaust system to mitigate the food smell. Um, the third one was uh, writing. A future future uh, writing will accommodate up to a minimum of 14 EV chargers. That, that was the electrical wiring of the property. I think the last, uh, there was a fourth one, excuse me, the, the last one is uh, LADOT will provide a right turn only signage out of the garage. And that had to do with uh, Speedway, the exiting uh, corridor behind it, which is a alley, so some, some sort of, it's a quasi alley street, but it's really an alley. Um, but it, it, it needs to be very clearly designated that it's one way, and the idea was the right turn sign would be posted there. Um, and that was supported uh, by the neighborhood council 11 to 6 to 1. That'd be 11 yeses, uh, 6 noes, and 1 abstention. The abstention was the president who doesn't normally uh, speak on these matters. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Holler. Uh, do we have a presentation from the applicant? Mr. Rand? David Rand? All right. Seems as if uh, Mr. Rand is not uh, there. Uh, now we can go to public uh, comment on this item, if there is any. Hello, my name is uh, Tim Bonnefeld, calling in support of uh, 13, item 13. Uh, Venice only has 5% of land area designated for use other than residential only. This project will provide housing and commercial use as required by the Coastal Act. Um, please deny this appeal. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Uh, hi, this is Vicki Halliday from Venice. Uh, I urge you to send this project through and on its way. It will help revitalize a boardwalk that has suffered greatly through the pandemic and the homeless crisis. The developer has made the necessary modifications and this property shouldn't remain boarded up a day longer. Please approve this so we can start to recover in Venice. Thank you. So the applicant just called in. Dave Rand, can you please press star six to unmute yourself? I can hear me. We can hear you, caller. Terrific. Good afternoon, honorable council members. My name is Dave Rand with Ron Brewster, Goldsmith, and Delbeck, representing the applicant. Um, we have been working on this project for literally years, council members, um, and we brought a project before you that we believe meets all of the criteria, both under the land use plan, the Mellow Act, as well as meeting city policy priorities to providing both housing and affordable housing. I want to clarify that the project in front of you does not result in a net loss of residential units. There were eight uh, multifamily apartment units on the site previously in a single family home for a total of nine units, not 10 units, as was stated. I want to clarify that there will be no displacement of tenants as a result of the construction of this project. Um, the site has been vacant since 2008. No tenants have been residing there. And this is well documented in the record uh, after extensive review by HBID. 
Uh, and the project will include a deed restrictive affordable unit, which did not exist on the site before. The project also includes a commercial component on the ground floor. Not only is that permitted by the Mellon Act, as has been determined by the Planning Department and the Planning Commission, but it will be required by the California Coastal Commission uh, as part of the Coastal Development Permit process for this project, because this is a commercial zone, and the Coastal Commission will not approve this project without a ground floor commercial component. Now, having said all that, uh, my client has been in the Venice community for years and does want to address some of the concerns raised by some of the concerned residents with respect to affordability and the history of the site. Uh, one, uh, it's in an acknowledgement of the need for a greater affordability benefit associated with the project, uh, we will voluntarily agree to further restrict the one affordable uh, required unit uh, from the low income level to the very low income level to, ser to serve a deeper affordability need. Two, we're in discussions with a local uh, nonprofit benefit based affordable housing provider to manage that very low income unit uh, and oversee it, uh, its leasing and operations and to provide wraparound services to future occupants to again ensure there's the greatest affordability benefit associated with that unit. And lastly, we've heard uh, uh, a concerned raised about the project design and the architecture uh, not uh, acknowledging some of the history of the site, some of the diversity that has been associated with this site over the years and in the Venice community, and specifically um, with the music community and the Bear Trap Music Company, which used to use the property from time to time as a recording studio. Uh, so we will incorporate a mural or a public art component um, for which there's already a place identified on the project plans approved by the Planning Commission uh, to, to incorporate that public art and acknowledge that history of the site, and that is personal for the owner of the property and the, and the, and the builder because his son was the founder of the Bearcat Music Company. So we are more than happy to do that. Our council members, this is a good project. Uh, we have got the support of the neighborhood council and other stakeholders in the Venice community. This site is in desperate need of, of redevelopment and revitalization, um, and the project before you will do just that, as well as provide a meaningful uh, uh, ground floor commercial component to activate this special uh, part of Ocean Front Block. Well, Thank you very much. The attorney says we have to. All right. Thank you so much to our appellants and the applicant, as well as uh, Mr. Merez from the Neighborhood Council. Uh, and we've exhausted our, uh, we have not exhausted our comments from the public, so we'll go to uh, public comment on this item now. Caller with the number ending in 1678. Can you please press star six to unmute? Hi, my name is Scott Kramerich. I'm a 20 year, over 20, 21 year resident of Venice, and I fully support this project. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Caller, we can hear you. Thanks, this is Noel Gould. Allowing mixed development such as this to replace residential structures encourages rather than discourages displacement. If mixed use is allowed to replace residential structures, developers are encouraged to demolish residential buildings and commercial zones and erect new buildings in their place, thus displacing families currently living in older housing stock, which is always, by definition, more affordable than new units deemed affordable. The city must not encourage destruction of existing housing so that more lucrative commercial, commercial mixed-use projects can be built in the coastal zone, especially when it is clearly prohibited by the Mellow Act. This would cause a steady stream of property owners getting richer on the backs of existing renters. I know you understand that the increasing displacement tens of existing residents needs to stop and that this is one of the main goals of the housing element. Why in the world would we allow the type of development that would result in more displacement when we are in a housing crisis? Please require this property to remain. Thank you, 100%. caller. That's your time. Hello. Uh, 
This is David Ewing. I just want to say, first of all, this call-in system is a mess, mm -hmm. and it does not do the public a service, and it does not do you, the Plum Committee, a service either. We really need to get that cleaned up. May I start my time now? Hello? Anybody Caller, there? your time has started. You have 43 seconds. Okay. I'll just quote from the Mellow Act. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. The conversion or demolition of any residential structure for uh, purposes of a non-residential use, which is not coastal dependent, as defined in Section 30101 of the Public Resources Code, shall not be authorized unless the local government has first <clears throat> uh, determined that a residential use is no longer feasible in that location. If a lo um, and, and I don't believe the city has anybody who uh, is, has the expertise to determine feasibility. Uh, so Thank I you, caller. That's your time. Hi, this is Michelle Jensen. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, caller. I'm uh, calling to support the project. I hope you deny the appeal. Um, I read, read through it, uh, and I, I think the appeal is looking to enforce some aspirational version of the, of, the, of the Mellow Act, not the current law that exists. I also want to reiterate that the uh, Venice Neighborhood Council and the Venice Neighborhood Council's Land Use and Planning Committee both supported um, this project with the conditions that I think Jim Ura has listed earlier. So I hope you guys approve the project. It's an idea deal. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you, uh, council members. My name is George Francisco. I'm the president of the Venice Chamber of Commerce and I'm a recently retired member of the Neighborhood Council who supported this project. I'm here officially today on behalf of our 300 businesses to offer support for this, this game-changing project that is nothing but a benefit to both Oceanfront Walk and the Venice community. I'm here to offer enthusiastic support to the applicant, Gary Sutter, one of the most longest tenured residents of Venice and also one of the most kindest, thoughtful applicants that could ever put a project forward. I would only hope that you accept my enthusiastic support and you deny the appeal and that you move past the specious meandering and completely cherry picked clauses that are being thrown out here as if they are evidence to support a denial of this project. This project has been enthusiastically supported for years and years and years. And I don't know how many more times I have to come in front of you to say that, but our business community supports that, and I hope you will dismiss Thank the Thank you, speech. caller. That's your time. Margaret, can you please press star six to unmute? Caller with the number ending in 1260, can you please press star six to unmute? Hi, this is Lori Burns, the founder of the Team Project, calling in support of this project. I wanted to speak about the setters specifically and how valuable they are to the community. Uh, the setters offered us 
their unit on Windward for over two years for homeless kids in the community at no charge whatsoever for anything. And not only did they not charge us for what would have been really cost prohibitive rent for us, they constantly brought in goods for the homeless kids that we were serving there. Had it not been for their kindness and compassion and focused on the needy people in the community, we would not have saved thousands of kids in over two years of being there. We were taking the kids in, getting them on the computers, getting their resumes done, and transporting them to housing. We have 126 beds throughout LA and Orange County, and we were able to save so many lives because of the setters, so I'm here to support their project. That's it. Hi, can you hear me? Caller, we can hear you. Great. Hi, this is Melissa Diner calling. Um, I have long been involved in volunteer efforts on the boardwalk. Um, I know the manager of the property. I know that this property, and I've been to multiple hearings on this, I think this has been getting dragged out for over 10 years. They've worked with, um, they've worked on revisions. I just want to enthusiastically support this project and hope that by you guys supporting it, it will continue to uh, hopefully have these appeals become less and less. I think if they were less and less, I think that we would be able to um, all come together on specific bad operators and all be in alignment in our community against them. But because they're constantly frivolously going after so many things, it's really hard and it really hurts our community, um, both the public and the private sector. So I would hope that you guys would continue to discourage that and support this great project that's just gonna bring a lot of vibrance. That's your time, caller. Caller, I can see that you've unmuted yourself, but we can't hear you. Uh, seems like their phone is uh, malfunctioning. Um, Erica Moore. Hi, this is Erica, and I just want to say that um, my concern is that I think it's really important that we follow the structures that are in place to protect our community, and that's why I think that the Mellow Act should be looked at. I don't think, I think that that's what the biggest problem is that's happening, and that's what's causing so much division, is, is that you have structures and rules in place, but now there's these, uh, like, these modifications that come in that serve a certain group of people, but it doesn't serve the whole community. And I think that when you start to undermine the structures that already exist, that's when, that, I think that that creates a lot of problems. That's what's created problems for me. And I just want to say that there were several people that reached out to me that were on the call to speak on my appeal, and they were not unmuted or called on. I don't know what's going on. I don't think that your system is effective, um, and I'm hoping that it can be adjusted so everybody can have a voice. I do um, hope you support the appeal. Thank you. That exhausts our speakers list. All right. If there are no questions or comments from the committee members, we'll hear from a, a representative of Council District 11. Uh, good afternoon again, uh, uh, Committee Chair Harris Dawson, Honorable co uh, Council Member, sorry, uh, Jason Douglas, uh, Senior Planning Deputy uh, with Council District 11. 
Uh, the council member wanted to take a moment to recognize uh, that the Venice neighborhood, uh, particularly our historic black community and communities of color have long endured displacement pressures resulting from rising housing scarcity and housing costs. And just for context, uh, when the Venice community plan was last updated in 2000, the Department of City Planning was planning for 21,844 21, existing housing units as identified by the 1990 census. Uh, using the latest figures from 2019 uh, produced by city planning, we have approximately 2.5% less housing units available to residents than we did in 1990. Moreover, since 1990, the Venice community has witnessed a 10% decline in residential population and a 16% decline in individuals who identify as non-white. These cumulative impacts have been witnessed year over year and exemplify growing disparities and gentrification on the west side, in particular, the Oakwood community of Venice. The history of this property in particular, uh, as highlighted by the appellants, is also woven into the cultural contributions of the black community of Venice, and we are fighting to uh, represent that community. Partly to blame are our city's outdated and complete land use plans and zoning ordinances within the special coastal community of Venice, the attempt to codify extensive downzoning that occurred from the 1970s onward and resulted in housing scarcity, scarcity uh, rising housing costs, and displacement. This downzoning resulted in not only in a reduction in allowable density, but restrictive development standards that prevent parcels even to build to uh, the allowable density on the lot. In the Venice Coastal Zone in particular, our uncertified local coastal program prioritizes cars and parking over people and homes. In a time when other coastal jurisdictions are exploring creative ways to implement robust parking plans to meet our parking demand and balance multimodal infrastructure to benefit our visitor serving uses, uh, Venice land use is governed by a patchwork of antiquated land use policies that stifle our ability to approve projects that simply maintain density and improve access to the coast. Moreover, the city loses affordable housing housing units every year in the coastal zone due to a deeply flawed interim administrative guidelines uh, that's used to comply with the Mellow Act. It has been a priority of Council Member Bonin to finalize the city's Mellow Ordinance to fix an, fix an ostensibly broken administrative review process and ensure that future projects preserve our existing housing stock and adhere to more robust affordable unit replacement and inclusionary requirements in the Venice coastal zone. Uh, within this context, uh, to conceivably build just nine of the 11 units allowed by right and maintain the existing density on this commercially zoned lot, the developer at 18 or 811 to 815 Oceanfront Walk was uh, compelled to complete a total of five combined discretionary actions just to replace the existing density that's on the site. Um, with that in context, uh, the council member requests a plum does it in fact adopt the recommendations made by CPC to approve the project and appreciates the volunteer conditions provided by the applicant. However, this project is far from perfect and the council member would love to see greater affordability. However, unlike most projects in our coastal zone, this project does attempt the bare minimum to maintain existing density and is now proposing deeper affordability than what was required by the density bonus ordinance. Until the city formally adopts a final mellow ordinance and updates and certifies its local coastal program, the city cannot effectively approve projects that best represent the community, maintain existing density, and implement robust inclusionary zoning requirements in the coastal zone. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you so much. If there are no further comments or questions on this item uh, from members, I'll move that uh, we deny the appeal uh, filed by power and the other uh, appellants and sustain the determination of the planning commission. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Ridley Thomas. Please call the roll. Council member Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Council member Gilbert Cedillo. Council member Bob Blumenfield. Yes. Aye. Council member Mark Ridley Thomas. Aye. Council member John Lee. Four ayes. This item is approved. Thank you. That takes us to item number 14. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, item number 14 is a draft ordinance to clarify regulations pertaining to temporary signs on temporary construction walls 
and on solid fences surrounding vacant lots. This was uh, pursuant to a council action on May 5, 2021. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have a uh, report or comments from uh, the city attorney and or the planning department? I think we'll go with city attorney first. Uh, yes, uh, this, this is Ken Fong. I, I don't have anything to report. If there are any questions about the report, uh, I'm, uh, I'm here to answer them. Thanks so much. Anything from Department of City Planning? Just an uh, introduction of the, of the item, uh, council members. Um, this is Darby Whipple with Department of City Planning, code study. Item 14 is an update to the ordinance for temporary signs on temporary construction walls and on wood fences surrounding vacant lots. The city attorney's office transmitted their report an ordinance draft to Plum on June 11th after instructions to draft the ordinance by city council on May 5th. The regulations were first established in 2007 as a part of a graffiti abatement program to provide an incentive for expanded cleanup of graffiti and trash around applicant construction sites. The purpose of the ordinance update is to clarify the regulations pertaining to temporary signs and temporary construction walls and on wood fences surrounding vacant lots to facilitate proper enforcement of the program. The amended ordinance addresses issues that include clarifying language and definitions, program enforcement and reporting, sign permit expiration and revocation parameters, application response timeframes, site posting requirements, and expansion to the RAS zone. Planning, building and safety, and the Office of Community Beautification, as well as the city attorney's office, are available uh, for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have callers on this item? We have one caller on the queue. One caller on this item. Caller, if you called in with a private number, can you please press star six? This is uh, unintelligible. I think the phone is malfunctioning. Uh, so um, we will uh, begin our uh, discussion uh, amongst members uh, with Mr. Blumenfield. Great, thank you. Um, you know, we talked about this issue uh, quite a bit the last time it came up. I think we're all in agreement trying to, to create uh, some clear some clarity around this the one issue that came up that gave me some pause was was the concern that some of the larger sites aren't going to participate in the program because cleanup costs are going to outweigh the sign revenues um and and our interest as a city is all about graffiti abatement you know the, the whole reason why we're even considering having uh signage on these walls is because we want to have uh we want these companies to participate in cleaning up the area so to deal with that question that, that came up, I'm going to ask that we include a report back. Uh, so I'd like to ask for a report back in six months from LADBS on the permits for temporary signs, including a comprehensive list of all temporary sign permit applications in process, approved or denied, identifying the applicant address, council district, size of the sign, location of sign, and any other relevant information that would help us understand where we are and where we are not getting the benefit of graffiti uh, cleanup. And so that's that's the report back I'd like to ask for. And, and again, the, the purpose of this is so that we, you know, our eyes are wide open and so that we make sure that the restrictions that we put on um, are the strongest restrictions that we can have, but at the same time aren't going to um, end up preventing graffiti abatement, which is something that we all want. Thank you so much, Mr. Blumenfield. Any other comments from members on this? So uh, Mr. Uh, Blumenfield has uh, made an amendment uh, to the motion, which I will second uh, and uh, move, move the item. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Blumenfield. Call the roll. 
Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfeld? Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Four ayes. This item is approved as amended. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, uh, Clerk, we have a, a request uh, to reconsider item number 15 for the purposes of a date correction. Call the roll on that. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield? Aye. Councilmember Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Councilmember John Lee? Four ayes to reconsider. All right, uh, I will move that this item be continued to August 10th. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ridley Thomas. Please call the roll. Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson? Yes. Council Member Gilbert Cedillo? Yes. Council Member Bob Blumenfield? Aye. Council Member Mark Ridley Thomas? Aye. Council Member John Lee? Four ayes. This item will be continued to August 10, 2021. Thank you so much. And can you confirm that that concludes our business for today? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I believe I may have missed the vote. Can I just have the uh, clerk conform my votes to the uh, majority, please? All right. Mr. Cedillo, I think, missed a vote. So we'll record him with the majority in that item. Uh, which item, uh, sir? I believe that's number 10, item 10. Item 10. Noted, thank you very much. All right. That clears the desk, sir. Thank you so much, we're adjourned. <laughs>